Hello everyone. Today in Squadron Strike, we're going to be taking a look at using missiles. Now, missiles is, again, kind of a catch-all term for different types of weapons. Um, usually you think of a missile as a weapon that gets to its target in less than two turns. There's basically the initial shot, then the next turn is going to actually make its attack. It's kind of like kind of a... Um, like a projectile is another way to think about missiles. This differs from torpedoes because torpedoes tend to be a little bit slower, but they have the ability to kind of follow their targets. So they take a little bit more handiwork as far as crunch goes, but um, they're very, very effective weapons. But we'll take a look at that another day. So anyway, the scenario should look pretty familiar. Uh, we basically have our little uh, the cutter here, completely ignoring the fact that we're probably going to attack it. Uh, everything's been regenerated. All the shields are good to go. We're now only going to use missile weapons. So we go ahead. We did all our movement. Everybody's done all that. I'm going to go ahead and move to his end of turn marker. Okay, get back here. He's actually going to be sitting right there. Um, we can see that we're lined up with him. We're ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and shoot a bearing first. So he is one, two, three, four, five away. So that means he's going to be through the hex edge. He's going to be off to our left. He's going to be in the hex edge. He's going to be at a distance of five, which means if we find the nose, it's going to be one to our left. And if we scoot down here, that's going to put it right here, right here, and right here, which is awesome because our MX-50 missile system is going to be ready to fire. So missiles are launched during the standard fire phase. They're also impact during the standard fire phase, so that's pretty useful. So how do we fire a missile? It's actually pretty straightforward. We're just going to say that we fired a missile. Now, our MX-50 require no action points in which to fire, which is pretty cool. So the first thing we want to do is we want to confirm that the target's in range. This is important. You want to make sure your target is in range when the missile gets there as well. So if um, we had a situation that looked like this, where his end of turn marker was here, you would not want to fire that missile because it would go here and then it would completely whiff the target because it would never quite reach it. So make sure when you're aiming, you're essentially aiming where he's going to be, not where he is at the moment. You know, that's uh, proportional guidance if you want to think about it another way. So anyway, so uh, I'm going to say I'm firing a missile. So we're going to go ahead and launch our missile. Uh, we're oh, by the way, by the way, I forgot to get rid of these tiles. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to be firing our missile. Again, we're going to keep it simple because once you start doing things in 3D, it gets a little bit more complicated. We'll take a look at an example of that a little later on. Okay, so missile away. So what we do then is we have to calculate what halfway to the distance is to go ahead and mark half of the travel of our particular missile. So this is easy because you remember we're aiming here. So we're one, two, three, four away, which would mean two would be the halfway point. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my little block here just to mark a missile. Actually, I should probably be far more soon. MX50, 1X MX50. Tactical <laughs> I'm not gonna get too kids either. There we go. So we have an MX fifty tactical strategic missile on the way. So now we go ahead and consider if we can engage that missile. What? Huh? What what what's the root? Huh? What's going on? So if you remember, there are multiple turns for actual firing. We have defensive standard and our, of course our reserve fire. Now this cutter, had he chosen to keep his beam weapons in reserve, could actually engage this weapon on its way to the target. Keep in mind you have to add three to the roll for this because it's such a small target at that distance. If it chose to do so, it actually has a bunch of different options. But keep in mind that's only if he declared that he was going to keep a particular weapon in reserve at the beginning of the combat phase. So if we wanted to pretend that he did so anyway, we could actually take a shot at those missiles at basically where they are as they're traveling towards him. Doing that is really, really straightforward. We simply figure out where the missiles are. So in this particular case, if you go down one, two, three, they're three away. It's off the hex edge. So it's going to be three away off the hex edge. The hex edge is right here. We know the missiles themselves are right here on our right side. If we were to take a look at our right side, it's going to be uh, one forward of the right, so it's going to be right there, which means we can engage it with the anti-fighter beams, of which we have two 
in that or in that arc that could actually engage it. So there's two different wep ways we could employ this particular weapon. We could use it as a standard weapon, in which case we fire, or we could use it with the interceptor quality. We'll go ahead and take a look at both of those. So if we wanted to attack it normally, this is really helpful if you're shooting on a missile that's like two-thirds of the way down the map or something like that. We'd simply do the usual range, it's range three, which gives us an accuracy of three, but we have to add three because we're attacking a missile. So that's a six up, but we have two shots that we can take with it. Keep in mind this uses action points. So let's go ahead and grab our handful of dice. So we need a six or better, we don't care about that. So that's no good, so the first beam wouldn't do anything. The second beam did get a six. So that means it's a six, a penetration of one damage at that distance. Let's see here, that'd be two damage, up to two penetration, but we said that it's a penetration of one, so that'd be three damage. So each missile basically has a total damage, if you want to think about it. It now gets what they call a survival roll. So our attack on that missile is three. So the missile itself gets to basically take two of these, roll, and then add uh, basically its um, armor quality. So in this case, it's a zero minus one, that's gonna be nine. It's a uh, special uh, armor quality, has no armor. So its safety, its survival roll, if you wanna think about it, is a nine. We compare the nine with the damage that was launched at it, if you remember, is three, which is a six difference in the favor of the missile, which means the missile does not get shot down by this particular attack. Uh -oh. So what's the other way we could have done this? Now, if we wanted to use the interceptor quality of the weapon, we don't roll to hit. We just take four automatic damage uh, from any weapon that is at a distance of three. The interceptor quality, by the way, also gives you the ability to engage missiles that are about to hit friendlies. So uh, that's kind of a neat little perk as well. So the missile is at range three, and we get four automatic damage, which is actually better than we did before. So I'm going to say that I'm using my interceptor quality with my anti-fighter beams, which means we don't roll accuracy at all. So we just need to roll to see the actual survival of the missile. Now, since there are two of these anti-fighter beams, we can choose to use eight total damage automatic at a range of three against that poor missile, which means his survival roll just got a little bit tougher. So a uh, six and a zero is going to be four. Our total damage is eight. That missile is shot down. No problem. And that's really what the anti-fighter beams are pretty good at. The flax even better. So um, he still is not shot down yet. And you're going, oh, geez, this is a lot to remember. I don't disagree. So the missile gets one last chance before it hits you to make an evasion roll to see whether or not it gets through anyway. So um, that's not something we're going to evaluate until we get to the next turn. So go ahead and put that away. Let's go ahead and skip to the next turn. So our cutter is now here. So we do all of our movement, da 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 and you'll notice fighters move, torpedoes move closer to targets, da 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 and we get to here, resolve standard fire on missile and torpedo impacts. He can also use his anti-fighter beams during the defensive fire step, and if he had Aegis, which would be even better, he could also have taken shots at those torpedoes. Keep in mind, they're still range two now, so this would be a much easier shot, and that missile never would have survived. But let's assume for some reason it got here, and it's ready to make its attack. So how do you make an attack with a missile? It's pretty simple. You're gonna take where the missile was after the first turn and compare where the guy is right now. Now this one doesn't take much comparison because you can see that the missile would cleanly hit his starboard side pretty much dead on. If you had any doubt though, you could actually shoot the bearing and calculate it just like you normally shoot a bearing. So missile attacks are pretty straightforward. He gets to go ahead and use his uh, defensive fire again. So in this case, oh, we just went over how defensive fire works. It'd be at range zero this time. Any buddies that had the interceptor quality could also try to shoot that missile down before it hits. But we're gonna assume that the missile got through all that. We'll even assume that the missile had to make an evasion roll. So let's say he did go here. Let's say that we rolled our defensive fire and um, I'm gonna go ahead and make this an eight. So I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm confusing you. So um, he took his defensive fire, he did four interceptor points, the survival roll on the missile was a three. The missile gets one last evasion roll, which would be in this particular case of this uh, missile would be a seven or better, which he actually does not make, so that missile would have been shot down. Let's assume it got an eight. So he did survive, he gets to make his attack. So the attack in this particular case would be coming here like this and we'd be using adding a one to the attack because it's a small target. The missile itself, a fired a total range of six, I believe. Uh, let's see here when we fired it. One, two, three, four, yeah, four, no problem at all. Remember that's from where we originally shot it, so kind of keep that in the back of your head. 
So um, for uh, range away is going to be an accuracy of 3 plus 1. It's a 4 or better to actually do damage. So let's go ahead and uh, roll that real quickly. Let's confirm that one more time. It's going to be a 4 up. And we got a 4. That was lucky. So our penetration is going to be the same. It's going to be 5. This particular missile is limited to a penetration of 6, which means we're going to do a total of 11 damage to location 2. Wow. Okay, let's do it. So 11 becomes 10 because of the deflector shields. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So 5 damage to location 1, correct? 5 damage to location 2. So we're going to go to location 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 damage. Wow. So that did an enormous amount of damage, which shows how lethal it is. But remember, we would have had so many chances to fire and shoot that missile down before it actually got to its target. So that's kind of the downside. The big thing with missiles is use a lot of them, and that tend to be a little bit more effective. All right, hopefully uh, you found that somewhat uh, interesting. Again, there's a couple little details you got to watch out for with the evasion rolls and the armor of the missiles and things like that. It's a little tricky sometimes to kind of keep track of. And remember, you can always engage missiles in pretty much any range. They're just very, very difficult to hit. All right, enjoy.